¿Qué pasa, campeones? Welcome to the Churros y Tácticas podcast. You might be surprised of me starting today's podcast, but yes, as we did agree upon, if Barça Femini was going to beat Real Madrid over the weekend, then I was going to do the intro. And I, in fact, I'm the one that offered this, right? The one that put that this, this let's say, deal on the table and Kian took it. So here I am doing the Churros intro. Um... After what has been a tumultuous week, Kian, uh, rem, rem, rembunctious, rembo- a, a boisterous, <laughs> I'm trying to come up with some words These words are getting out of describe. control. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, and that's how it's felt. That's how it felt. Honestly, since we last uh, hit record, it feels like uh, th- things have been getting out of control. Um, but at the same time, very interesting as well. Um, following our uh, messy being greater than Cristiano debate. Um, so anyway, let's to get back on track. We got a lot to get through today. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Rehash. Uh, Kian is back in Canada as well, and uh, we of course have to discuss this weekend's results, uh, which has a lot to do with the current mood that is set in. I'm in no mood for celebrations or rolling R's as I'm watching this uh, friendly, the Maradona Cup, take place over in Saudi Arabia, which sees Barca play this friendly against Boca Juniors. In the memory of the deceased legend that is Diego Maradona. Que pasa, campeones? Welcome to Churros. Let's get into this. Uh, Kian, what's up, my friend? How are you doing? Jet lag okay? You're back from uh, Madrid, the derby. Um, you must be feeling good. feel great. I mean, it's uh, the interesting thing about very short trips. I'm doing shorter trips, right? Like, I'm not doing, like, five days, weeks anymore. I used to do long trips. But, you know, I don't like to be away from the kids. So, I, you know... I was in. I got to Spain Saturday morning, and I left Spain Monday morning at the crack of dawn. The cool thing about going like at that pace across the ocean and back is that you don't really feel the jet lag as much. It's just kind of in and out, and you're, it's just a blur. And you get there, and I had a great time because just jam pack, you know, the game, the podcast, and straight back to the airport. It was, you know, uh, but must be so real almost, right? Like I remember when I was a kid, I used to think like. Imagine if just instant time travel was possible and you just like snap your fingers and you're in a different place, different culture altogether. That's pretty much what it's like um, coming from different time zones, especially if you get to sleep, of course. Uh, you know, I've never been the person just just hit the seats, uh, hit the seat and sleep. But my wife is my dad always been as well. And, and it, it just means you go to sleep and you wake up in a completely different environment. And it's almost surreal. Right. I mean, you should have that jet lag. Do you still suffer from jet lag? Um, again, with these, I do generally speaking, but not in this trip. I, I think that's the that's the privilege of living in 2021. You can take a nap and then wake up uh, in a different continent. Whereas, you know, when our parents were kids, you if you wanted, to, I mean, well, like let, or let's say before planes existed, you'd have to get on a horse or a car, and then like a month later, maybe you'd be in the you other side of the country. Go way back now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> going way back for absolutely no reason uh (laughs) by the way on friday so what we actually it wasn't just like we already knew barcelona's women's team was going to beat real Madrid feminino so it was a foregone conclusion that you were going to do the intro regardless because there's no way that we were going to win that game but i will say uh and i didn't see the game yet i still want to watch i'm planning on watching it who knows with you know if i'll be able to but um I, I was expecting it if you want and save you the trouble. Kian. Well, just that I, I, before you say anything, I, I, first of all, it was a great uh, I was talking to Nils, who, you know, who was sitting with me, Presser at the athletic game. And he was there at the game and he said it was, you know, great atmosphere at Valdebebas jam packed stadium, which was nice to see. And I was expecting like 7-0 or 10-0 and it was only like 4-1 or something. So, uh, you know, I think we were all surprised it wasn't a bigger bloodbath. So, but you still got to do. You the know injury. what? I think every was. Yeah. 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 But I mean, the, Barca was leading by three goals uh, to nil before Madrid got one back. And yeah, um, you know, they're kind of I mean, these these ladies are just something else, man. It's yeah. it's you're talking an undefeated, not just undefeated, excuse me. It's at this point, I mean, 13 match days in, you know, what is that? Another six almost with the tomorrow in the Champions League. So you're talking a win streak, a win streak so far of um you know, do the math. 19 wins. 19 consecutive win. It's the, yeah. the, Jonathan Gerard's team. The ladies are only winning, picking up points in threes. Um, 
and you just don't see them slowing down or stopping. Obviously, the big question will be the latter stages of uh, the Champions League, which, uh, you know, we've got a lot of fucking cover, man. I mean... <sighs> yeah, it's a busy one. And look, as we Holy we said shit. as we said on Friday's episode, you know, Barca Femenino are playing a different sport altogether. It's just they're they're on a different universe, and yeah. we already talked about it. Um, we got a lot to talk about today. So um, there's the draw, there's the results. I will say, you know, watching the Osasuna Barca game, um, I thought you were referring to the Osasuna Barca before. That's why I said I, I I can save you the trouble. I didn't realize you were talking. No, about that one I did watch. That one I did watch. Okay. So tell me, what were you going to say when you told me to save the trouble? So like, what was your what was your analysis of that game? No, well, I was texting you during the game because I was watching it late. Yeah, and I said no spoilers. Yeah, and right at that moment, um, was was it uh, Garcia? Right, he, he got Danny the Garcia scores the header. Danny Garcia. Yes, right after, you know, Nico gets his very first goal for the first team. <sighs> well, so, to, but talk me through it, though. You're, you, you're not saying enough, I, like, because I, I don't, like, I, I, did, I, were you encouraged at all about anything? Dude, I don't know, man. It's It's been a funny time, Kian. Like, I, I've been, you know, emotionally a little bit... Um, if you want to say under the weather, I don't know, but it's just been an emotional time uh, in uh, like in all areas of, of life. Whereas like uh, my escape used to be, <laughs> for a while at least, used to be Barça, but not even there am I able to find some peace and rest. And that is of course my job as well. And and then there's a whole circus surrounding that as well. So I don't know. It's uh, I, I live these games very emotionally. They're emotionally charged games. These these are emotional times. And um, it was like, uh, I mean, walk you through it, you know, from a tactical perspective, it's almost, it's, it's so hard because it's, uh, you feel like there is, there is a change, of course, uh, being bestowed upon this team by the hands of Xavi and uh, certain positive aspects are certainly visible where you see a team trying to, you know, take initiative, and the opponents have had the balls, spread the pitch, use the wingers a lot, um, uh, you know, trying to take uh, uh, um, an offensive, uh, um, again, initiative uh, to the game where you take the ball to the opponents, you defend with the ball as well. Um, but it's just not, it's obviously not an issue product yet. Uh, that, that, that's a foregone conclusion as well. And when we talk about those is that, this is sort of still preseason for Xavi, yet he's playing with a massive disadvantage where he has a team that is, uh, you know, whether half of it have bad habits from having played under, you know, questionable conditions and having instilled a sort of philosophy in the dressing room that has clearly not benefited the team. And, you know, old habits die hard with many of these players. Uh, and then you have new players that are still... Um, quite frankly, taking, you know, being an example uh, for a, a lot of these more veteran players as well. You look at Gabi, you look at Nico, you look at Abde as well. Uh, three players that, quite frankly, and, and again, whether we believe the reports or not, have to be saved and have to be spared from any, any sort of criticism because um, they are showing that intensity and that willpower to succeed and, and, and you know, win the game, go for the game without any complejos and any complexes or inferiority complex or questions or, you know, doubts that, that, I mean, you see so many players that have so much talent that, you know, could produce such, so much more so, uh, better football, convincing football, good, you know, good quality football consistently, yet they're making so many errors and mistakes or even uh, lacking in something as basic as intensity as, as Chavi himself addressed in the post press conference, right? That, yeah, it just, um, it, to get to your question, you know, walk you through, it's just very hard to analyze these games without getting, uh, yeah, e emotional about it if you care so much for this team. And and, and it was, it was you know, a gut punch after, one after the other, the old one-two, right? Obviously with the one-nil uh, and then the two-one as well to then see Chimi Avila. Chimi Avila, Kian, how many times have I talked big about Chimi? You know, he's one of my favorite players. I was so excited when before his knee injury that kept him a uh, sideline for, for far too long. Uh, he was linked with Barca. That was when, when before Braithwaite came in, right around that time. And I was like, oh my God, if we can get Chimi in. Um, 
that uh, you know it was i was happy for him uh, <laughs> quite frankly and happy for these osasuna fans as well because this Hadar is just it's an awesome stadium man it's it's just a great football stadium where these kind of matches are are quite frankly awesome uh intensely lived and it's it's great football you know people come call this a farmer's league or don't give any merit to you know points or being taken away from teams like El Sadar in in a stadium like that um quite frankly don't love the game of football uh and uh if they want to not consider these big games uh and important games uh and where league titles are won then so be it if they only want to include uh you know or call knockout stage games uh big games and important games and so be it but anyway i digress yeah i, mean, I digress uh, we want we also soon are an annoying team to play against and <clears throat> we all want them in la liga par- partly because us like that are such a great great atmosphere and it brings so much to la liga uh, look at and chima avila man the, the game is just never over when he's on the field i just it's it's amazing he's such a great story we all were broken when he suffered his injury now that he's back and he's doing things like this i mean it was an incredible story and i mean part of the reason i wanted you to talk me through it because you know obviously when you texted me that i didn't respond about the game because you said no spoilers so i was like oh, well, i'll let you watch i think at that game the game wasn't actually over i think in my feed maybe it was two one at that point or or maybe it was one on one i wasn't sure but when it, but when it's two one i was like he'll be fine they're gonna win this game and i you know they probably should have and i mean they should always beat Osasuna, let's be honest. But on the run of play, you guys were the better team. But it is weird because when I was watching this, I actually felt that um, on the, not overall, so like, because Osasuna to me were so bad defensively. You see them defend in a 4-1, 4-1 block. And it was just, it was not compact at all. It was vulnerable. You saw that, you know, players like Nico could get into these channels pretty easily. Um, by the way, if, if, if you want some silver linings, I'll give you a couple or just at least things to be happy about. Nico and Abde really impressed me. I think Abde, yes. Abde's really grown on me because at first when I saw him, I was like, this is a very eager kid. He's talented. I think he overdoes it a little very bit, eager. but, but he's, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I actually think that that's right now. It's a good thing to be over eager for a kid like that's that amazing. because Barca needs some initiative. The, like he's taking players on. He's not afraid. Yeah. He's a good line breaker. Mm-hmm. His touches are really beautiful. He's playing with a bounce and a swagger and a confidence that Barcelona could use. I thought he was a real positive. I, I actually think he's starting to convince me that, you know, after Ansu, was he, should he be the other winger starting, even if everybody's healthy? Maybe. Like Right now, Keon, how, how can you not have him start, you know? Yeah. Um, he's, he's an energizer buddy. And I, I, I completely sign on you just said that you in, initially you felt this like over eagerness, eagerness, overzealousness, you know, willingness to or, or need, want to impress. Um, but that's exactly what the team needs. That's exactly what Xavi asked for from these players. And it's what you're going to get from this fresh, new, young crop of young bloods, young guns that want to... Uh, you know, shine on the biggest stage. And, and, you know, they know that they are playing for the team that they have always dreamt to play for, you know, from uh, this is this is their mission, right? This is their mission to play for the Barca first team in this case. And they're not going to let this opportunity uh, uh, get by them. Some players, you know, have maybe forgotten uh, or have lost that passion, which is also kind of normal uh, with the passing of years. Um but it's inexcusable uh, for a club like Barca. That's why, you know, like we talk about hard and harsh decisions have to be made. Uh, and on basis of this, you know, you, you have to say that your Gabis, your Nikos, your Abdes right now are must starters in, in Chabi's 11. There's I, I, no doubt about it. I think that's about right. I mean, uh, they're playing with a certain hunger right now, which reminds me a little bit of the hunger that you know, when Ren Madrid were initially started their rebuild after Ronaldo left and Solari started to bring in the Regulons, the Viniciuses, the Llorentes, it kind of reminds me of that, where it's like, we just, it just seems like the bellies are full for everyone else, but these kids, they're, 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 they're starving. They, they want to go out and they just want to beat people, right? It kind of reminds me of that. Anyway, so I thought Nico was good. I thought, I thought um, Abdel was really good too. I think part of the problem was that 
you guys didn't capitalize and, and create enough chances on that bad Osasuna defense. I mean, you know, those two goals were really good attacking sequences. But beyond that, how much did you guys were you guys able to create? Um, and I think the other part of the problem is like who like the set piece defending from Barca was really poor and you know on like Real Madrid level poor Real Madrid have been disastrous defending set pieces. Danny Garcia, was, or David Garcia, sorry, he was completely free for that header. Um, it's it's just one of those games that you should have won based on probably the balance of play, but it was kind of weird just looking at it because I just felt like. At times, it felt like Osasuna and Barcelona were almost equals going at each other, and um, and it's 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 really weird seeing Barca like this, man. I don't I don't know what else to say. It's uh, before well, I would I would be sarcastic or jinx it, but like this is mm-hmm. it was poor. It was poor. So I, I, you know, there's still a lot of time left. It's funny because I, and I'm gonna drag Real Betis into this discussion out of nowhere, but. Um, we were talking about, like, Lucas and I were talking about Barca. If they'll get into the top four. And I was like, I think they will, partly because I don't expect Real Sociedad to sustain their f- top four um, place. They'll cool off, and they are cooling off. They have been cooling off. But I expect Sevilla and Atletico to be there in the top four. So I think Barca will sneak in. But Real Betis is coming out of nowhere now and <laughs> playing amazing football, just Play smacking nine. Real Sociedad over the weekend. And... So oh, no, man. there's another one to worry Yeesh. about there. But hey, and at, we shouldn't yeah. be fully surprised neither because Pellegrini, uh, despite of uh, his bad reputation from his time at Real Madrid, is a fine coach. Yes, um, very good coach. And 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 his players, he's got tactically very good players. Um, with Fekir, not even you know having been gone, obviously having been out, missing as well. Yeah. So one me also on fire. Yeah, they just uh, resigned Canales, I think, and put him yeah. on also a billion. The billion euro buyout clause basically telling like everyone to stay the f away from this kid i mean he's not even a kid anymore he's like 30 but no you know. yeah yeah but that's cool and um no look and and, and you know it's like it, it was happened with Celta as well with the uh, yago aspa scoring the three all mm-hmm. uh, again it's it's like uh this is a reoccurring pattern right now uh barca are in trouble there's no doubt about it and um Things are not good. It's it's like I said, and on the last part, I I don't know if we hit rock bottom yet, and that is the most worrying part. Was after that defeat against Bayern, then accepting Europa League, which you know, let's move on to that topic at some point in time, um, because we also need to talk about that, right? I mean, it's it's Barca are in Europa League. Things are just not good right now, uh, and we've drawn a team like Napoli, who quite frankly are. Pro- quite possibly the worst team that we could have drawn. Like, I mean, it's, it's, you look at the teams that we could have possibly have drawn, uh, you know, you had Bragas, you had your uh, Eastern uh, European teams. Uh, not that any of them, uh, Rangers, not that any of them would have been uh, easy, but uh, we had Lazio as well. We had a bunch of Italian teams. So, but Atalanta, I believe. But uh, the fact that obviously it's Napoli is, is not great for us. And, uh, like I said, I mean, right now, thank God this game will be played in two months where Chabi will have more time to instill his football philosophy, work get some with players his players. Back too. You know, we have the winter, get some players back, man. And we're still missing Pedri and Ansu, let's not forget, yeah. for crying out loud. You know, our two best players. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Pedri is going to slot into this, this uh, you know, midfield as well, uh, given the great performances of Nico and Gavi. You know, I think we're going to see a midfield with Frankie on the bench, potentially, you know. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. But, um, well, uh, the point being is that Napoli will be very difficult. And, and, and I don't know if we can be considered favorites against Napoli. I, I don't consider you favorites, but I don't know if I consider Napoli favorites either. I just I expect just two good games of football that will be entertaining. And hey, look, like. We joke about Thursdays in Europa League. Thursdays are going to be freaking bangers, man. Look at the amount of great games in the <laughs> Europa games. League. There's just a lot of good that, teams. That is true. And a lot of good games. I'm certainly going to watch on Thursdays for sure. Um, it's going to be fun. You're so kind. Thank you, Kian. For sure. Best. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Europa League, man. It's a great tournament. Uh, before, I think I'll forget. Well, so I just want to mention it now because we, we talked about Real Betis. But I just want to give some love to Canales 
and Juan Mila. Canales right now, fourth in progressive passes in the entire league. He deserves everything, all the praise he's getting. Whether we think the 1 million euros is ridiculous or not, obviously no one's going to play that for a 30-year-old anyway. But uh, good for Betis to be like, hey, man, this guy's ours. We don't, don't care. Um, he's he's, good he's for a, him as well. And good for him. And he's, a, he's one of those oh, people that... Yeah, he's just yeah. one of those people you gotta be you gotta be happy for. And Juan Mi, second in the league in scoring right now. You know, it's it's re- really good to see a story like that as well come out of this league campaign. Um, uh, the draw, Europa League, Champions League. We can talk about the Champions League draw as well. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, okay, so yeah, sorry, I'm I'm keeping one eye on Boca Barça over here. But what's the score? Um, no, the game is just starting. Uh, oh, okay. I'm two minutes behind. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, that was hilarious. Thank God <laughs> we got something to laugh about. Thank fuck. We got something to laugh about, us cool as because we need a laugh. And that definitely gave us a big chuckle, man. That was... Like, imagine being Butragueño. You're leaving, you know, this ceremony, the guy, the UEFA uh, draw... Champions League draw. You're on your way to, to the airport. <laughs> Thinking wow, you're I'm so glad you're you you're loving this. Thinking you're pl- I'm just putting myself in Butragueño's shoes. It's funny, man. Like, yeah. Laugh a little. Come on. <laughs> I'm, this is fun. I, I find it funny, too. I'm just amused call. that you're this amused. Then you get a call. <laughs> then you call. What? The, this is unprecedented. This, this is never... It's we've weird. never seen something like this before, what happened. So it was weird in and of itself. And then it was like, he gets a call. He's like, hey, come back. Uh, we fucked up. We got to do the draw again. He's like, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, you just you just turn turn the car. We'll explain when you get here. We got to do it again. Just come. And he's like, no, no, no. I, I'm not coming. I, uh, you got to come. He gets there. <laughs> you end up playing PSG. <laughs> That is funny. That is so funny. when you, I'm I've sorry. seen a lot of people. I, I've seen mostly Kool-Aid's laugh about this. Is it because you guys think that PSG will beat us, or like what's going on? Oh, Kian, come on, um, and uh, excuse. Well, I don't know why other Kool-Aids are laughing. I, you know, I <laughs> that's a genuine work. question. Don't get mad Trimini about as it. As much as laugh. <laughs> no, listen, listen. I'm going to explain to you why this is so funny to me. Again, okay. I'm talking for me personally. I don't know why other Kool-Aids are laughing. I'm super happy about this because, first of all, I know Madrid better and I know never underestimate Real Madrid and always consider them favorites against whoever they play for, uh, against. Yeah. Um, but the way I see it, it's a win-win. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the teams I hate most <laughs> is leaving the competition. So whether it's <laughs> Real Madrid being knocked out early or fuck BSG, uh, you know, or Q, QSG, let's call them, being knocked out early. It's going to be a delightful experience, and I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to this game. So, okay, so that's... I, I was like, come on, yeah. you should know. I, I consider, I, I never underestimate. It's not here gloating, laughing that Real Madrid are going to guarantee to get be knocked out. Absolutely not. Make no mistake. I, the, the, I was going to ask you about this because I wasn't sure how you would feel in general. Like, forget about how the draw went down, but just the fact that, you know... It's such a conflicting thing for everybody. I mean, for Real Madrid fans of Barcelona, this whole PSG experiment because, you know, we have Sergio Ramos coming back and then, you know, we have, you have Messi. He's going to score. It. Like, what is it going to be like for it. you to, if if PSG beat Real Madrid and then you obviously, you see PSG. Oh, good. And really, like, so It'll there's, it, to me, it's like, so who's the lesser evil to you, but Real Madrid or PSG? Um, look, right, you know I have nothing good to say about QSG. Yeah. So, nothing. And I'll hugely enjoy them seeing get, you know, uh, seeing them get knocked out. I would hugely enjoy that. Um, Even if it's like, if it's like, you know, ah, PSG it's, led it's, by it's Sergio Ramos, that, that, that sits well with you? <laughs> and Nasser celebrating yes, in the stands, that sits well? Okay. You mean if they go through? Yeah. You mean if they knock out Real Madrid? Ah, yeah. if I, I was talking about seeing PSG, QSG, excuse me, get knocked out. Yes, that would be delightful. It would be, I'll be creaming myself. Now, if they knock out Real Madrid, I'll be super happy too. Are you kidding me? <coughs> like, I love seeing Real Madrid get knocked out and, and lose, and, you know, especially of the Champions League. So, this great. is one thing that 
there's no I have like no source on this there's this is just pure speculation coming out of my brain I think I think Real Madrid are annoyed about this not because they had to <laughs> they had to do the redraw Butragueño is annoyed I think but I, I think He's they're annoyed like I think they're annoyed not because of the redraw I think they're annoyed because now they feel awkward about signing Mbappe in January before the game <laughs> and then having to sit in the in the box with with Nasser and Florentino during the game when Mbappe is a Real Madrid player, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I think that that It'll actually be like, it's like sitting. <laughs> it's like sitting. It's like you steal a girlfriend away from a dude, and then you're both sitting together like at a theater or somewhere, like an, an uh, you know, I don't know, like a, an event or something. Yeah, you you're seated next to it, each other. It can <laughs> work if you're charming enough and you have a good relationship, but we yeah, yeah. we don't have those standards of uh, between the, these two. I, I I mean, I expect, I, I just expect. Real Madrid is a type of club that will do things out of respect for other teams, and they'll like we're not going to do this signing now. We'll wait till the two legs are over. I think that's a real thing. Um, <laughs> I you know, but in the draw in the vacuum. <laughs> Florentino from <laughs> in the stands. He's just sitting next to, to Nasser, giving him a handshake, and he opens his coat. There's like a heart, and he's like, "I love you, Kilian." <laughs> <laughs> the draw in a vacuum, I'm fine with. I I think PSG can be beaten, obviously. Uh, I'm not saying that's, um, you know, whether that comes back to haunt me or not. I'm just saying from a pure analytical... Right now, if you watch PSG play and you watch Real Madrid play, play I, I have confidence beating this team. Things may change until February, I don't know. But that it's just, I'm fine with the PSG draw. Uh, I'm conflicted about seeing certain things. I still Tell me can't... you wouldn't have preferred Benfica, though, please. Of course, yeah, because, you know, and no matter how you spin it, no matter how bad PSG are playing, they can just, in literally the span of four seconds, Messi or Mbappe or Neymar can do something out of nowhere. And I don't, you know, that's, there's nothing you can even... You can do your best to contain that, but you know if they get the ball in transition and you expect Militao and Mendy to do everything by themselves and to stop these attacks, it's you know it's worked up until now to a certain degree. Obviously, we're first place, but is it sustainable against a team like that who can do that to you in transition? I'm you know I'm not looking forward to that necessarily, but I'm just saying like it, it's 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 fine. We can we can get past this, but obviously I would have preferred Benfica. Uh, I do want to also just quickly say for. The other draws. Uh, can I just, can I just just say two things, or you you want to move on to other draws? Go ahead if it's on topic. Yeah. No, just it was really I, I, really funny as well. I I, I read uh, a comment somewhere when you drew Benfica. It was like a Madridista comment saying, "Come on, guys, <laughs> let's avenge our Kule brothers and beat these guys for them." <laughs> I thought that was that, that had me in stitches. That was cool. Uh, and then I just want to ask you how you how do you think uh, Ramos will be received? How do you feel about him coming back and scoring in the 92nd minute to put uh, PSG through? Uh, that's probably going to happen because that's something that would happen to us. But um, so don't love that. Uh, how will he be received? I hope with with rounds of applause. Um, mm -hmm. I I I hope that he's the greatest defender in our in our history, and. He's knowing done. the Madrid crowd, though, knowing how, you know, they can whistle their greats. What I would hope is that, like, so I'm thinking back to precedence of this. Um, you know, one comes to mind where I think it was Beckham, if I'm not mistaken, returning back to United, to uh, Old Trafford as a Madrid player, obviously, and him getting applauded massively as uh, before the whistle before kickoff and as soon as he touched the ball those applauses went to boo and but it was almost you know cynical it was funny it was classic it was gold that that typical british humor that uh, it just made you laugh you know because he got the ovation he got the respect that he deserved before the game and then as soon as you know it's whistle as soon as the game time it was like boo but like it, yeah that was I, you know that, that comes to i i don't remember facing manchester united with Beckham in our team, maybe it was with another player. Like maybe it was when he was with PSG or Milan or something. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just drawing blanks. 
But either way, um, I mean, shit. I actually don't mind that in theory because <laughs> it's a it's a good tactic. If you want to hit, if you you know you celebrate yeah. him, you respect him. But during the game, you don't obviously don't want him to beat you. You want to throw him off the game. Go for it. It's a fair game. I don't know if Ramos would respond to that better. If you know, because there's there are some players who the way they're they're wired is that if you if you treat them with hostility. They're gonna to go to another gear and be like, "F you! I'm gonna to have to put the performance of my life now because you did this." Um, so I don't know psychologically how that would actually work on Ramos, but you know, I don't hate it in theory. The, the, I'm thinking about past precedents. I mean, <clears throat> um, Fernando Redondo got a, a fantastic reception with uh, with with uh, Milan when he came back um to real madrid he got a standing ovation when he was leaving the field i would i would assume it's something like that i mean look we don't even know if ramos will play let's Ronaldinho be honest came back with milan to the camp play. no mm. yeah. yeah so um the gamper, but, uh... yeah well yeah but <clears throat> uh, i i don't think it'll be booze I, i'd be surprised you know it's mm-hmm. it was weird the way he left it was i wouldn't say it was he was blameless in it but you know, mm-hmm. given the fact of his stature and stuff, it, it, it would shock me. Um, other draws? Other draws. Really happy for Villarreal to luck into Juventus. Oh, that was great. That was great. I loved the... Uh, there was this thing they around... I'm on, like, this social media trip today, I noticed. But there was, a like, a meme that went around... <laughs> Where did you see that one that I posted on Instagram? You see Man City running after Villarreal. Yeah. Man City is the groom, uh, Villarreal is the bride, and she jumps into the car with a UV driver. Man City. I driver. think. Fuck, come back. I think from a matchup perspective, that them. that suits Villarreal pretty well. I you know given that the and alternative opponents, um, and you know Juve did well enough in the group stages, but they're struggling so badly in Serie A. Even last year when they had Ronaldo, they were struggling. They, you know, we had Atalanta, Villarreal experience, and I think Atalanta are even a better team in Juve this season. And Villarreal took care of Atlanta, Atalanta. So I, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking well. this for you Villarreal. Juventus to 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 also get better as the season progresses, though, because it's a, perhaps a little bit similar case to Barca, where they can, you know, strengthen the in the winter market, and they've got good football players. So uh, it, it's not going to be easy for Villarreal, but I think that and Villarreal are very inconsistent and unreliable themselves. However, Emery is great in knockout games in these kind of tournaments. He proved that, obviously, with uh, uh, everything he won with Sevilla uh, in the Europa League. So it's a great matchup. And Villarreal got good chances, for sure. We almost had Ronaldo versus Messi. And yeah. I'm so yeah. glad we avoided that. I just can't. I can't. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, mm-hmm. I would have to just delete social media. I, I don't think I mm-hmm. would be able to handle the, the, the discourse, the dialogue. It would be mm. World War Three. What are you talking about? You thrived in the last time. In, in, in the, the, the last time we discussed this. And do you know how much it took chapter. from me? It took from me in that in okay. that just okay. one podcast. It took from me and it took from me. I was depleted. I was exhausted. I can't imagine doing that them against each other in the Champions League over two games. It would be a, it would just be two fans massacring each other, two sets of fans massacring each other. I can't handle yeah. it. Can I don't want to see them actually play t- against each other ever again for that reason. I I don't want I don't won't enjoy the dialogue one way or the other. Um, but uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll have, we may have to bring it forward to the uh, PSG versus Manchester United quarterfinal or something. I don't I don't know. Um, but how do you like Atletico versus Atletico versus Manchester United? Do you like that matchup for them? <laughs> Well, I'm happy as well for them, of course. I mean, they drew Bayern before. Talking about, uh, you know, getting away with... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Manchester United are in trouble right now as well. They're not playing great. Um, there's all kinds of question marks surrounding their team as well. Obviously, they have Cristiano, who continues to be uh, uh, decisive for them, uh, scoring uh, clutch goals. Um <laughs> Scored a few. Wink, wink. You like that? You like that? You like what I did there? You guys are happy now? You cunts? All right. Jeez. Uh, Oh, my God. (laughs) we got to post this online, man. You can't be using words like that. 
Um, so it's, but it's a great, it's good for Simeone. I don't know. It, it, we're, and, 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 but also for Cristiano to go back to the one done and, you know, he knows what those, that, that crowd is like, that stadium is like, he likes playing against Atletico. We, uh, you know, need to remember, uh, when he was playing at Juve, of course, knocking Atletico out, uh, he, he loves playing in that stadium. So it's, uh, great to see that as well. I'm, I, I prefer that we avoided the Messi Cristiano matchup and got a Messi Bernabeu and Cristiano Wanda matchup instead. I think that, uh, you know, that's exciting and, and hopefully we'll get out the best out of these two players and hopefully we'll see, uh, in this case, Atletico go through. I, 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 again, <laughs> against Bayern, I would have not given them a chance. Uh, against Ale uh, United, they've got a good chance. Yeah, I, I, uh, that's, I mean, it goes Although without I saying. was very I, disappointed over the weekend with, uh, with Atletico and, and I felt like... Pfft, Madrid looked so comfortable in the derby. It was it was annoying. It was awful. Um, That's interesting. It's not so what I, I expected. I was at that game, and I can tell you, like it was, it really like it got comfortable later on in the game. But I, there were definitely moments where Atletico looked like the better team. But mm. but there was that whole mm. there was that whole period. And I mentioned this to you and and Chris. We were recording a podcast in person after the game. That like there was a whole period in the second half where it just felt like all of a sudden there was a gap between the two because the Bernabeu was going crazy and Modric and Vinicius were doing all these touches and flicks and tackles and there were all these Olays all around the stadium and it, and it just felt like I wouldn't say artificially but some somehow like there was it just felt like the gap was bigger than maybe it really was when you zoom out and look at the stats and the numbers and everything like that um but I, I will say this Diego like during this Real Madrid win streak I'd say for the first half of it, I felt that we were just kind of scraping by and we were getting some luck and opponents were missing chances. Courtois was coming up big, Militao and Casemiro were coming up big. And still is. And Courtois still are. Still coming up big. Still are. And Vinicius is still doing his things and Benzema's doing his thing. But I feel like in the last couple games, it, it mm. feels like better to, it feels real to me i feel happy about the performances like I, that I, I actually feel like this is a good team and we actually have something cooking mm -hmm. here and i didn't necessarily feel that way like a month ago you know so I, something is brewing and i'm extremely 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 cautious about it because i've seen this movie so many times before as recently as 2015 and ancelotti almost may have jinxed it after the game he was like Let's not get carried away. We had a huge win streak in 2015 and then Modric got injured and the whole season fell apart. And I'm like... Jinx. Yeah. I, it just, don't, I don't even want I to think know. about it, but it's, it's, it is... Angelotti, he's either, he's either cooking us something up or... Uh, I felt the same as you. Uh, you know, I felt the same as you. I felt that this team was scraping points and scraping by uh, through... The famous Madrid Flor, Flor de Madrid, mm -hmm. but lately you do get a different sense that they have a much better control, a much more Militao and, and defense has been excellent, um, to my surprise at least. Obviously, mm -hmm. your midfield is still, you know, still cooking, and Benitez is coming out of his own uh, and being the player of La Liga so far, you know. Uh, I would say he was voted, I think, player of the, the, player month, of the month November, right? Yeah. Player of the month, yeah. Uh, Benzi um, scoring and everything. So, no, it's uh, look and, and, and look at the points as well. I mean, how many, you guys are eight points ahead of second, nine of third, I believe, 18, of course, of Barca. I don't even understand so, that number. Do you understand that number? I don't understand it. Well, yes, I do understand that because Barca has been, uh, you know, I we've won leagues with 18 points distance uh, from you guys. So I, I do, I do, I do know what it means. I understand it's new for you. Enjoy this feeling. I know it's awkward, but yes, it's, uh, it's, it's at this it's, point of the season, though, Diego, <laughs> it's not even know, Christmas break. History. <laughs> it's December 14th. 18 points should not be allowed between anyone. You have to like tr or try to you have to like rig the lead to go 18 points ahead of anybody. Oh man, crazy stuff. Uh I just don't understand it. Uh did you know I was looking at like you said though, but that 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 either plays in our favor or can really go against us if, if the gap 
continues to increase or the fact that we still have time to make up ground hopefully, hopefully. i think you guys do have a game in hand right Let's see if we were hit by bone we so you could you could Sevilla, cut it yeah. down to a, a a marginal 15 points 15 baby come on do it i uh i was looking at the january schedule because someone was asking mm -hmm. me when's the next when do you think you're, you'll do you'll come for the next game and i was like i don't not gonna do Cadiz. um maybe valencia but i then i noticed that there was a classico in january i which what, in, in uh, the supercopa yeah yeah and i had either forgotten about it or didn't know that we were going to play each other in the semifinals or are forgotten i don't know but i yeah. there's a classico in january in sevilla i might go to that mm -hmm. one so oh there you go uh i don't i are you worried that there is a classico in january Come came out of nowhere, man. I don't know. So, yeah. No, no. You're not worried. What okay. am I going to be worried about? All right, nothing, I guess. Um, we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. We'll yeah, cross that right bridge now. when we get there. Yeah. Supercopa is one of those things that I, I, I hate the idea of, but when it comes, it's like it, there's always something fun about it. You know, there's it's always like a little Christmas. It's like a little taste of. of post christmas it's like oh a little you forgot that little present a little it's like a, it's like boxing day stream. yeah it's like hey it just comes out of it just pops up and it's like oh we have this now this. after the party yeah right, um right. all right so i i have to go soon do you have a uh, is there anything pressing that we miss uh nil nil over in uh riyad so uh oh the maradona no, friendly no news <laughs> Yes, the Maradona Cup. No news coming from Saudi Arabia. Are we getting the Barca uh, A team? Is it the superstars all, all starting? The Minguesas? All the youngsters are. All the youngsters? Um, I don't know. I am not. I don't have the starting 11 in front of me now. Oh, actually, no, I don't. I have it. I'm just doing a quick look because I'm just curious. I guess I you can't you. really play a game in Saudi without bringing your A. Dani Alves is starting. That's, that's yeah sorry that's, that's the cool. big news of course the yeah fact that Danny, jesus christ i should have mentioned oh you guys are actually resting a lot of players so we have ferran blanc we got pooch on the right wing we have mm -hmm. pooch we have yusuf who is uh alvaro alvaro catalan i don't i've never i don't know who that is he's starting as your defensive Dest midfielder is playing. Dest is playing on, is he playing on the left that's what google says i don't know mm -hmm. um yeah you have Balde playing left back. Yeah, sounds like a banger, man. I, you know, I should let you go so you can go watch that. That sounds great. So, so I'll do that. I'll let you go watch that. Seems like you're itching to go watch it, and you guys gotta go talk about it on Barca TV, probably. So, I'm happy to end it here. Do you have anything else that we need to talk about? Absolutely not. All right. Just that. Um, no, no. I'm gonna save that for myself. <laughs> I'll say that another time. For, for Friday? No, no, I don't, no, no, no news, no news. No, it's just like uh, wanted to know if you wanted to jump in the aftermath of, dude. <clears throat> this was big. I mean, this debate has uh, set new records for churros y tácticas, and I, it was I, good marketing. Uh, was wondering whether we should discuss with our viewers the fact that this is not a level playing field, and I, I take issue with that. So, the le a level playing field in, in terms of more Maridistas joining the discussion than Kool-Aid, I'm assuming you mean, right? Obviously. Well, I, I don't know how to change that other than the fact that we need to get more Kool-Aid listers. We need to get, you know, I never understood why SB Nation didn't uh, want to pick up this pod. You know, when I was there for Barca Blaugranas, uh, they were like, oh, this is insane. You can, uh, remember like how uh, the editor there was just working again like didn't want to work with us basically Even it wasn't sp nation it was barca blaugranas right barca blaugranas yeah. yes yes um, well, sp nation didn't want to put it on either well sp nation they were when i talked to them they were semi open to it but they basically had a rule the rule was every site gets their own podcast and there is no spanish football section on sp nation so where are we going to put this one so you guys just do it but we're not going to do like mm. open, put it on a specific blog just posted on managing madrid um yeah, yeah, yeah but you know i will say like that so the chavi modric tweet that did some rounds for uh for yeah, our yeah, for the churros account i think it hit some records the great thing yeah, about record, that record. tweet was was that um 
the next day, the Kool-Aids found it. And they came like Th- like three three Kool-Aids. Stop stop making this no. They like, they came in packs. Did rounds in Kool-Aids Twitter. All it no. It did rounds on like so it you know it was like uh, three hundred when they're getting cornered and then uh, the Persians are the Persian Empire is is getting their number and then all of a sudden Leonidas like calls in the other army and they all jump from the mountain. It was like that. I think like one Kool-Aid Twitter account picked it up and then the rest came. They all started jumping on. And they were jumping on on Marisa's and we like, and they really. I didn't they, see that. I they, didn't see. And that. oh yeah, Maybe go I look at it. Though. They took big offense to 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 Modric being compared to Chavez. As so. they should, obviously. <laughs> Good. Here we go. I'm happy. It is so, insulting. Oh um, God! Don't start this, man. Don't. I don't. I have no. I, I told you it was draining last time. You said they took great great offense. I'm just agreeing. Okay, um, well. Uh, but I'm not sure. I there's there, well there's part of me that was that sometimes when it comes to this stuff it's like. Do I don't even want any fans. I don't. I just want like nothing. I just want sometimes silence. Like we just put this out there, and then the universe hears us, and then no one can bark back at us. That that would be nice. That would be. I think like that. I, everyone just like, no, but, hey, look how important we are. Listen know. to what we have to say, and uh, shut up and, <laughs> and take notes. Just take that. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Take that. No, no. I mean, look, we put this out for the people, and obviously, we are just two more, uh, you know, fans with opinions and uh, thoughts that we want to share and put out there, whether it's be- communicated between you and I or uh, a wider audience. I just feel like, you know, it's not as, let's say, gratifying to uh, uh, get all of the post match or like, like the, the, the collateral, collateral damage after you uh, put your heart and soul into this uh, debate that, quite frankly, you feel like, look, it's irrefutable facts. Um, but, so the not, I I'd really, I'm willing to keep, still keep it up. Dude, I, hate, still, I hate when you do I'm, this, I'm, man, because you do this no. at the end of the podcast when there's no time for like to, 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 right, to continue right, the right, conversation. Right. That's why I said you're I opening cans of worms myself. now. Okay. That's why I said I, I wanted to keep it for myself. But all yeah. I'm saying is... I didn't is know it was that, that, but okay. That, and I said, from my perspective, that putting out irre, irrefutable facts, and I said, I'm, and I'm, I'm happy to listen to yours as well and have a debate about it, even get passionate about it. But then, you know, the... the, the um, uh, like the post drama, I don't know the word to, to, to use this, but, but let's say the next day to then get all the ramifications from one side... It's just it, it it yeah you're you're like this is not a level playing field this is not a grat this is stop becoming a gratifying like experience discussing this to then have to put up with all the insults uh, coming left and right you know questioning your credibility even knowing that like I like I said I put my job on the line quite often on this podcast mm-hmm. and I'm happy to do so because I enjoy you know the conversations we have and also discussing with our community but. Um, and I'm not saying it's your responsibility or your fault that, I mean, you have a massive, obviously, Madridista following. You have an entire platform, one of the biggest uh, fan sites in the world for Real Madrid and, and the big accounts on, on two big accounts to, to back that up. And that's that's great. I mean, it's great for us. It's great for the, the podcast. Uh, <laughs> not so great for me after having these kind of debates, uh, whether it's Xavi, Modric or Messi, Cristiano. You know, but I'm... I'm uh, Coño, I'm a speck. I'm a little speck in this because I'm not, you know, I have the, the 2,000 followers that I have, which is, uh, es una mierda, es una caquita. Pues mira, pues hay que aceptarlo, and I, I accept it, uh, you know, and, and I know that uh, social media is uh, filled with poison and trolls, and you need to have a thick skin to put up with that kind of stuff. And uh, people that expose their opinions publicly um, need to view it as that and take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I just think it would be more interesting as well for the churros y tacticas community to have a more level debate where both sets of fans get involved. Whether it's just me fucking holding the goddamn Barça torch and have to put up, you know, and defend my point against thousands and thousands of Madridistas that just spew hate and venom at me. Uh, yeah, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. You just, I cannot win. Like, it's it's a lose lose for sure. Well, we got to grow. We got to grow the audience to we got to grow beyond Real Madrid fans. And it, it is funny because when you think about it, <clears> this <throat> podcast, like Real Madrid is like at the bottom of the topics, topic list. You know what I mean? 
mm-hmm. and it's, and and Barca mm-hmm. is the primarily mm-hmm. primary focus. Um, but we, is, we yeah, but we yeah, do yeah, have coolies, so we do you need the coolies to keep spreading to the other coolies. And I, I will say there was one guy on YouTube who had a Barcelona profile picture, and he said Ronaldo is better than Messi. So I, I suppose he does speak for every coolie. So I I think that debate is settled <laughs> there too. Um, well, and, and hey, 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 do, if you ask any Maradista, the common thing they'll say is that, like, they'll always preface it by saying, Diego, you know you're my favorite Kool-Aid. So you got, <laughs> I know they you do got say that. that. <laughs> I want to be friends with you. But we do, but we do gotta, we gotta all ask, friends. we do gotta ask our listeners to definitely raise their level of maturity in their dialogues and all that stuff for sure. So, um, we gotta, you got you know, for people have to understand for Diego and I, when we get into these debates, it's like two brothers getting into a debate, you know, after the debate, we don't go and like, you know, we don't go and insult each other online, you know, we, you know, we, we reconvene and it's the same, you know, over WhatsApp. Yeah, we, we, we we talk some shit on WhatsApp and then we show up again and we do it again and again, it's a family. So, you know, so the listeners have to keep that in mind too. They don't need to also just get carried away and go, go crazy with all this. But as long as we keep it, you know, sick to, let's stick it to football. You know we're good. Um, all right, I have another podcast starting soon, bro. So I got, I gotta go. But go, go. And you know what? It's really uh, I need to fix out. If somebody can help me understand why, also the 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 feed, the stream is so glitchy from my end. Uh, and I know that people have been complaining about that in certain comments as well. And you're right to do so. I need to figure that out because it's uh, uh, it's very annoying. Anyway, that's yeah, it. send that's us it some for help. today, folks. Yeah. Okay. Yes, if anybody uh, could explain that. Okay. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, Diego. Nice haircut. Thank you, dude. We'll see you Friday Thank over you. on patreon.com slash churros y tacticas. And if you want more controversial Twitter stuff, twitter.com slash churros tacticas without the Y. Thanks, Diego. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye.